Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. This video here is part 4 on the hail and sun damage repairs I'm doing on this little Toyota Echo hatchback. So the paint code for this one is 581 and the colour name is Gold Metallic. So this is the Wednesday. The following couple of days I'd finished the primer work off. The Tuesday I did this uh, driver's side repairs primer and painted the roof and today I'm coming in and I'm going to finish the paintwork on the rest of the car. So, being that I've painted the roof the day prior, it just broke the job up and made it a lot easier. Um, also makes it so that you're not having to try and lean over your fresh paint in order to paint that roof. So, um, so I'm not running the risk of possibly touching the quarter panel or the door when I'm painting the roof. And I've, I've, yeah, for a while now I've been doing it that way. Um, anyway, back onto the prep work here. So um, I've gone around and firstly nipped up all of those uh, small pinholes that we had from the uh, repair stage. Um, just put a bit of uh, extra fine uh, two-pack filler into it, polyester filler into it, and um, let that dry for only takes about five minutes. And onto my sanding now. Usually I would like to block my primer down, yet this car, it's my own car, it's just a quick job, it's just uh, make it look, you know, a bit of a tidy up. Um, I didn't want to waste my time, to be honest, in blocking it because the benefits of blocking it compared to not blocking it, there's not much on, on this car, you know, because I, I really just mainly wanted to, just a neat and tidy you know, shiny, colour looks good, and no uh, totally uh, obvious dents and dents in it, so I got what I wanted. Um, so yeah, I'm just using the orbital sander with some 240 on it to start off with, so I'll start off with 240, it's something a bit coarse, coarser, it's going to bite into that, um, that primer, it's going to knock all the orange peel out of that primer, so we start again from a flat, um, got a flat surface to apply our paint onto. So I'm not using any interface pad for the 240 stage, however when I finish it off with 400, which is what we're going to be painting over, I'll be using the interface pad. Um, so I'll give you just a quick run through the steps that I do on my prep work. So 240, no interface, 240 edges, so all the primer edges, and then I'll be using 400 interface pad, and then 400 sanding sponge on the edges. and blow it off and that's about it in a nutshell. As you've seen around those windows and stuff like that where I don't want to uh, hit it and the uh, tail lights, headlights, stuff like that, I'll put a bit of tape over it. Um, I've also grabbed a damp cloth just with normal old water and just um, got rid of any sort of mud and dirt, any contaminants that were already on the panel. Um, if if there had been any say oils or oil based contaminants anything like that tar road grime and stuff like that you can get a bit of gum wash thinner or even just some wax and grease remover prep soil that kind of thing so yeah cleaning your panel down don't underestimate that before you do your prep work it's a very important stage and make sure you don't skip out on that also this stage here sanding your edges um it's very important it's I see it as being one of the differences in between a professional job and a a, a hack or you know just a, a non-professional job, someone who's, who doesn't really know what they're doing. So just being always important to get those edges sanded down nicely. Also all your swage lines and stuff like that where you've uh, orbital sanded up to, if you just leave that off the orbital sander and you don't go over it by hand, um, then yeah, you'll get some uh, sort of funny pigtails type shapes around those areas. So make sure you go over them by hand to finish it off with. Um, so obviously you've got to be careful not to leave any of these 240 scratches which I'm leaving in. Um, some people like to just sand their edges straight with 400, but I find you use twice the amount of sandpaper and it actually takes longer. So I find if you start off with the 240 first and then finish it off with the 400 after, uh, you can save a little bit of time. You also actually save on sandpaper too. So uh, this 240 I'm using here, it was actually the piece that I pulled off the orbital sander when it was sort of getting a bit old and I'm able to reuse it on the edges. So um, another thing you can save on materials and stuff like that. So 
uh, the guys that are doing it at home that have to buy their own boxes of uh, sandpaper will sort of understand that a bit more than the guys that work in the body shops um, uh, that have all that stuff paid for by the boss. So as you see there, I've done all the edges. Next stage, I'm using the orbital sander with the 400. So um, I have skipped out uh, big parts of the prep work on this. If I was to show you the entire job, you'd be sitting down for hours. So it's just um, I've just edited it up and showed you uh, just just enough so that you can get the idea of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So, as you see now, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm using the 400 just on those soft back sanding sponges. They're really good. Um, when I started my apprenticeship, they weren't really around. They had these sort of different ones, but they were never never as good as what they've um, been able to develop these in these later years. So, um, they've been around for a while now, but um, I started in the year 2000. Uh, 3M sort of had these uh, super fine pads and stuff like that, but they never seem to remove the orange peel, they were sort of more a bit like a piece of scotch bright, more so than sandpaper, whereas um, the new ones will actually remove orange peel and do a real good job at doing stuff like that. So, um, as you see, I've given it a really good blow off. Now, I just thought I'd make a mention to how well you should blow it. Like, I'd, I'd probably give it about 25 minutes, like li literally 25 minutes, open the doors up and just go over the entire thing like two or three times. Uh, next step, I've wiped all the edges down where I'm masking, Giving it a just a quick mask up to be honest. Um, we didn't have like everything like we we had everything we needed, but we didn't have heaps of it. So um, I was just really saving my materials when I was masking this up. I would usually throw two rolls of thirty six mil masking tape on a respray. Um, so it is only two doors, so obviously you're going to use a little bit less. But I I didn't even use half a roll on this, so I was just sort of masking up. Um, yeah, just to use the least amount of materials and um, end result, something I'm happy with. So um, I skipped out the masking stage. Uh, you know, I, I, um, I wasn't even 100% sure whether or not I was going to actually edit this footage up, as I made a mention to in a couple of the other videos. Uh, I just thought I'd uh, record it. Um, and yeah, I uh, did another video that you guys said that you wanted to see the rest of this uh, car being done. So this is actually why I'm editing it for you guys. Um, just make a quick mention to uh, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and all of my loyal supporters, give us a thumbs up on the YouTube. I'm mainly asking because a guy has gone and stolen my logo, right, which I had made for a thousand dollars and this guy has gone and stolen it, changed it. I kindly asked him to remove it because it's my copyrighted um, property. He's then gone and decided to be rude about it disputing the copyright claims and he's made all these either his friends or made all these new accounts and he every now and then he goes over all my videos and goes and dislikes all my videos so previously I used to have about one or two a day if that like a lot of the time I wouldn't get any and just because of this total asshole um, he's gone and done that so just make sure you do just help us out by giving, you know, the more thumbs up, it makes my videos look better. It actually helps them uh, rank in search results, so it helps other people find me as well. So, um, yeah, just do us a favour. Just uh, give us a thumbs up whenever you uh, think of it. Um, okay, so what you saw me doing first up was using the wax and grease remover. Um, I did that over the entire car. Next up, I'm using the high-pressure air hose and using the yellow tack cloth. Um, and next up I'm tack clothing it again so I, I gave it two full tack cloths over the whole thing if you want give it more if you find you're getting lots of dust in your jobs yep give it another um, another tack cloth by all means it can never hurt sometimes I'll, I'll do it yeah three four five times even if you want the jobs to turn out real nice it's the um it's the last step before paint work so you know don't um yeah don't think you're gonna you know be wasting your time by doing it, put it that way, because you've spent so much time on getting the, the rest of the work this far, you may as well slow down when you're in the spray booth, that's what I was always told anyway, speed up your prep work when you're in the booth, um, yeah, just take your time, make sure it's done correctly. So um, what I'm using here is actually a ground coat, um, <coughs> for this car I only ordered two and a half litres from a paint supplier, and um, it's pretty good at coverage. I probably didn't really need this ground coat, but I just thought, yeah, for what it's worth, we had some paint sitting in the cupboard there. 
I just threw a couple of um, tins together and I thought I'd just throw that over the, um, the primer just to give me some better coverage over all of those cut throughs in the primed areas. So uh, it seemed to work quite well and um, yeah, I, I ended up putting three coats of the top coat, base coat over the top of this. So um, yeah, I, I've had a few guys ask about um, loads of different videos and have no fear, I've got a little list there of uh, vids I've, I'm going to make up, so you know, make sure you do let me know. Um, I'm always writing it down and you know, uh, trying to improve this channel. This channel is my life, as a lot of you guys can tell. I love spray painting and I love this channel. I spend so much time um, working on my videos and working on making my channel better. And uh, I guess that comes through in the videos when the, um, from, from the feedback I get back anyway, you guys seem to be quite happy with the videos I'm making. Um, and yeah, I make no real apologies to making a 30 minute video when there's a respray. And this isn't even going to finish the respray, I'm going to actually make another video which is going to be dedicated to the clear coat. So this is going to see the three coats of base coat down and you get a quick look at the car when it's finished off. So the next video will most likely be uh, the clear coat and the one after should be the last video on this car. I actually had a guy ask to see the paint, uh, the hubcaps being painted, so um, <clears throat> it was just, just by chance. I decided to uh, film it, I decided to record it, and um, yeah, I probably wouldn't have even bothered about putting it in if someone didn't make the request, but there you go. That's um, I do listen to you guys. Uh, I do apologise if I can't get back to everyone's uh, questions and stuff like that. I do my best, I always do try, but um, you know, I'm a busy man, I've got a uh, business to run, I've got a life of my own as well, so, um, and also, it, sometimes it, it can take me an hour each day just answering comments, and that's an hour, another hour I could be spending on making the next video. So, these videos don't edit themselves, obviously, and it, uh, for a non-YouTuber, sometimes you don't understand how much uh, time and effort goes into making a YouTube video. Um, <coughs> it's one thing to, just to get some raw footage and click the upload button, but the kind of videos I make are totally different than that, um, which is probably a big part of my quick success. I've only been doing this for a year and nearly 6,000 subscribers already and got um, a very loyal following. And I'd like to say thanks to all my supporters. So I'm using DuPont Centauri 6000 base coat on this job. A um, couple of reasons, it's, it's a good quality base coat and it's not overly expensive, you get good coverage out of it, as you can see straight away, like, uh, that's your first coat over that ground coat and it, it's visually sort of covered in the booth, you might find obviously if you got that out in the sun, yeah, it wouldn't be covered, but um, yeah, that's why we put an extra couple of coats over it. Another, so my second coat is going to be just coverage, I'm, I'm just going to be going for coverage, that's my main aim. And my third coat's going to be more of a sort of technique coat, a tech coat, drop coat. Some people call it a drop coat, I think. But that's more when you sort of hold the gun right back and you have the pressure right down. Um, I had a guy ask me recently, oh, I, sometimes I get stripey uh, look in my paint. Uh, it's not going on evenly. How do I stop model? Um, I have got another video sort of dedicated to model, but... Um, some of my advice and what I've ended up finding, because I have been through stages when I've got a uh, model, um, it's not whether or not you're using fast, slow reducer. Um, some people say, oh, slow reducer, yep, that makes it better. i found I actually prefer it to the flash off quicker, um, personally, and I've found the best thing is just getting it on evenly. You can put it on wet, you can put it on medium wet, you can put it on dry. But as long as that base coat's on even, it's not going to look stripy, it's not going to look modelly. So that's my um, best advice I can really give you guys. A nice big fan spray gun. So these developers GDI Pros are quite good for it. Pro lights, even the, um, the original GDIs, or I think they're called the Millennium Gun in the US, very similar gun either way. The fans are a little bit smaller on them, so they're a little bit harder to get the um, uh, the silvers and the, some of those golds and silvers to lay on real nice. But um, yeah, I just found a nice big spray fan, even application, you shouldn't have too much dramas. So I decided to leave most of this footage 
pretty much unedited. Uh, some of you guys say that you like to see that kind of stuff. You like to see everything I do when I'm in the booth. Some of my videos I edit out uh, certain stuff, but um, yeah, I decided when, once we're up to the paint work on this rear spray, I'll just leave it mainly unedited. There's a couple of little bits here and there I chopped out just to um, improve the video, but uh, yeah. So you notice on the ground coat that I put down the first time, I started on the windscreen pillar, so around here, and I work my way back around and come around and finish at the bonnet. But when I'm putting this gold, like my top coat gold on, uh, I started at the tailgate, did the rear bumper, and then worked my way around that way. Um, main reason I did it that way is because I was just getting the feel for the car, I guess you could say. Um, base coat's pretty forgiving. If you don't get your base coat on 100% right, I'm not talking about model here, I'm saying if you don't start from the right spot, a dry spot in base coat isn't really going to be an issue. Like, if, if you see my base coat's landing on that tailgate, that's not going to be no big deal, dramas at all. Um, I decided uh, when I was painting, I was thinking about it, I thought, hold on, that's going to be the best spot to start and stop. Um, the way I used to go about a respray was, um, I thought it was great and it did work, it worked fine. But there's, um, so what I used to do is I always used to do it all at once. So I used to do the roof at the same time. I'd go and I'd start at a quarter panel pillar Start there, do one side of the roof, go over to the other side of the roof, and come down your quarter panel pillar. Then come back over to the original side, do your quarter panel, boot lid or tailgate, come back around to the other side quarter panel, then from there jump back over to the other side, do, do your uh, doors guard, and then go back over to the other side, do your doors guard, and then do your bonnet. There's so much running around, um, it's um, yeah, it's like running a marathon in the booth while you're painting. Um, I've actually just found it so much easier. Start at one point and walk your way around the whole car. That way there's only going to be one dry spot, <coughs> which is where you've started. A good spot to do it is something like a tailgate, you know, as you see me doing. Tailgate and rear bumper bar, no big deal. Another good spot is to do it over a fender or something like that. Um, so passenger side fender, I guess, so you'd, you'd rather it passenger side. And then, as you'll see me in the next video, all I do, bit of thinners, spray that over the dry spot that you've ended up with, which is not going to be much anyway. Spray that over and it's it melts the uh, fresh clear coat into the slightly tacked off clear coat and you've got yourself a good job and it's much easier to get around the car as well, not running around and... Yeah, thinking, oh, where have I done, where have I not done, and stuff, stuff like that. So, this is our uh, second coat of base you see me putting on now. There's basically no real flash off time. Uh, the temperature on this day was about 40 degrees. It would have been, yeah, 38 to 40 degrees, something like that. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's perfect day for spray painting. I, I like those temperatures to paint. I'm using uh, standard thinners in the base coat and um, yeah, it's dry where I'm at in Perth so we, we don't have humidity which is really bad for paint. Um, my spray booth here is actually, um, it's got no burner in it so it's got no heat but being in the environment I'm in, it barely needs it. There's only really three months of the year it gets below 20 degrees um, and yeah, the rest of it, you know, it's uh, nice and warm. So, uh, make a quick mention of the prep I did in the booth as well. Um, I, wet it, I wet the floor down, as you can see, there's still a few little puddles. You don't want too much because when you're in there, sort of um, masking it up and you, maybe you want to kneel down on the floor, a little bit of water is not going to, it's going to dry up in a couple of minutes in this temperature, but you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be swimming in it and then your, your airline can be flicking up. I've had that um, happen before where you airline flicks a little bit of water up onto your panel and, and uh, yeah, it doesn't look very nice, so, um, yeah, just don't overdo it with your water. Um, the guy that actually originally installed this booth came in and he was just saying a quick g'day, and he said that when he got this booth installed, he actually had it installed on a bit of uh, box section steel, so it sits up an inch or two off the ground, and he had uh, grates in this booth which actually helps with, you've got some sort of vortexes in this booth because it's a semi-downdraft, semi it's not a full downdraft um, and it, uh, it, it goes towards the back of the booth um, so 
I'll, I'm actually planning on doing a dedicated video to this booth um, and I'll explain in more details about it. Um, but what he said is that those, those grates actually help with the vortexes, the vortices, whatever you want to call them, um, because the air would come down and hit that and then uh, travel lower rather than coming back up. Um, that's what sort of happens. So the paint goes down and then sometimes with the dry berth or so with the flat floor without any grates in them, it'll the overspray will come back up into the air and then hit the panel again and actually turn into a piece of dust. So it's, it's not that you've actually had um, dust or anything land, it's actually just dry overspray that's um, come back up dried and landed back onto the panel. So. There we go, as you see this coat, it's going on real nice and heavy, as I mentioned before, this is my coverage coat. You can see that it's actually changing the colour now, it's turning a lot redder. Uh, the green from the um, ground coat must have been obviously still showing through from my first coat. However, this second coat, I should have just about have coverage, um, and the last coat, as I mentioned before, will be our tech coat. Another thing I thought I'd make a quick mention to is I'm going to start uh, uploading my videos on a schedule. So, for a while, uh, you guys probably know I've been uploading videos every Thursday and Sunday, but they're now going to be uploaded at a specific time, which is going to be midday Perth time, which is UTC plus 8. So, I'll give you guys a quick run through some of the common uh, geographies that, that watch my videos. I've noticed that Americans are 25% of my uh, viewers, so... Uh, the east coast of uh, America is 11 o'clock Wednesday night. The west coast is 8 o'clock Wednesday night and Saturday, same time Saturday nights as well. So um, Poland, uh, UK, uh, Germany, Poland, Germany and part, big parts of Russia is 7 hours behind. So uh, UK is 8 hours behind me uh, and Stockholm, Sweden, that's another uh, 7 hours behind which is the... Uh, you know, I've got a few viewers from around that area as well, so um, just uh, check your world clock for if, I, if I've missed you out, if I have, um, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's just uh, midday, Perth time, Thursdays and Sundays. Um, so continuing on this job, I'm onto my tech coat now, so this is uh, just about to finish the job off. Uh, it's by far the longest video I've um, ever had to do, uh, so it's a little bit tricky for me to actually kind of think of new stuff to say for the entire video. I think I've done, definitely done my best anyway. Uh, I just thought I'd uh, make a quick mention to the PPE, which is Personal Protective Equipment. Make sure you wear your gloves. You should really be wearing coveralls as well, which I'm not. It's too hot. I'm, I would be sweating my absolute ass off. Obviously, wear your respirator. I'm wearing my full face respirator in this video. Um, you can't see it because I've got the head mount camera on. Um, however, I'm definitely wearing it. I don't care how hot it is. I will always be wearing a respirator. If it's too hot to wear a respirator, it's too hot to paint. I'll come in the next morning and do it. Sometimes you are better off just, um, uh, if it's extremely hot, like it does get here in Perth sometimes, just leave, leave the job overnight. Come in in the morning, do it. Uh, so I think I come in this morning, it was about 6 o'clock in the morning, I was out of here by 1.30, well and truly, shop was, uh, roll it always down, I was out of here, I just jumped on my scooter, got a little uh, 50cc scooter, it's a good little thing to get me around, and um, yeah, I just left this overnight, because as I mentioned before, we don't have a, a baking uh, oven or anything, it's just a, just a booth, spray booth, not an oven. So this is our last coat. Um, this is our last coat of our base coat, where just it's just a tech coat, so it's as I was saying before, I like to get my pressure up, so around 25 psi. Uh, it's obviously going to depend on the spray gun that you've got. If you're using HVLP, um, you may want it up around, say, 30 psi, so it atomizes nice and fine. As I say, you don't want it, uh, I don't like my pressure too low on my tech coat anyway, because it just goes on thick chunky and the metallic's not going to stand up properly and I just find it gives it, yeah, not not the nice effects in the sun anyway that I like and it's also not going to replicate the uh, most of the paint finishes. I've, I've done it before with the lower pressure and it looks cool in the booth, it looks real nice. Uh, then you get it out in the sun and it just doesn't look right, it doesn't look like the factory finish. So. 
Um, yeah, so this is obviously solvent-based paint I'm talking about. As far as I know with water-based, I'm yet to use it. I, I used it like once at trade school in probably 2003, a long time ago. I can barely remember what it was like. I just remember it taking a long time to dry. So that was probably the first generation Speed Hacker. I think they've improved it since then from what I hear anyway. But yeah, all they do is they put one wet coat on uh, and then they follow that by a sort of mid-wet coat and supposedly that's it rather than the three coat system. So they say you get better coverage with the water-based paint. Um, the way I see it is you might get better coverage but it takes longer to dry so and it's a lot more expensive. This is my own workshop. I can't afford to be putting expensive water-based paints on everyone's car. Um, and it's something I'm going to have to learn as well and get used to and obviously, you know, take probably a couple of weeks to get the hang of it. And yeah, just for now, until they actually make it legislation or law in Australia, I'm not going to use it in my workshop anyway. Yeah, I have been told though that for the last coat or your second coat with the water base, you, you don't want your pressure so high. Um, supposedly the Supernova Entech, uh, I think it's WS400 uh, Supernova spray gun, it's actually maxed out to like 1.5 bar, which is um, about, say, 25 PSI, which, you know, um, when I was using my HVLP, I wouldn't think twice, I wouldn't think twice at all about using sort of 30 PSI, 29 PSI, to like 2 bar, you know. Um, so it does sound quite low, so, you know, uh, the info I'm giving you guys is on solvent base. Uh, a lot of guys still use it here in Australia. I'm pretty sure a lot of America still uses it as well. Um, from what I know, uh, just some of the states have moved over to the water base, but it's not. Uh, it's not like Europe where just about everywhere you have to use the water base. Uh, and I think I've never really even heard of it, but they tell me they've got this stuff called cellulose paint over there in the UK. But I don't know what it is. It, sounds pretty crap from the um, the uh, research I've done on it anyway so yeah I'd say thanks a lot for listening to me and watching me for the last half an, half an hour of your life guys um, yeah it's been a bit of a challenge for me to sit down and talk for this long um, so yeah make sure you do give it a big thumbs up to acknowledge the effort that I've put into making these vids for you guys as always, make sure you put some comments in the comments below. As I say, I do my best to reply to all my comments, but if I miss out, don't worry. I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, don't waste your time sending me private messages unless you need, if, if there's a privacy issue, if you want to buy a gunman shirt off me and you don't want the whole world to know your email address or if you don't want the whole world to know your address and private details, by all means, that's why I've got private messages available on my Facebook page. It's the Facebookers that are actually worse for it. So um, I just don't have time. If, if you've got a question to ask, you know, just ask it in an open comment. Other people can learn from it. Um, other people can join in. So it's as simple as that. As you go there, so it's looking pretty nice. Um, next episode is going to be clear coat. The one after that is going to be painting those hubcaps and a final... Uh, finish off video paint, uh, polished up the headlights as well to bring a bit of uh, new life back to them so there it is looking all nice something that I can be proud to drive around the streets and it doesn't look like a total eyesore I still remember when I first got it I went down to do some shopping and this elderly couple were walking past it and they didn't realize that it was me walking up to my own car and they're like oh no have a look at that car you know I said hey what's wrong that's my car you know and they go, oh, that's all right, we were just, um, yeah, sort of feeling bad that the hail damage hit it. And I'm like, yeah, it's all good. So it looks, it won't be getting those kind of reactions anymore. Um, if you're a beginner at spray painting, I really highly recommend this video here on the right. Check that one out. Um, there's another NSO Water Bellaria with your demo on the left. Otherwise, view my channel. Thanks for watching, and this has been 